atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's also important to note that those protons, neutrons, and electrons are made up of even smaller particles. They're called quarks. But we're going to talk specifically about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons have a mass of one atomic mass unit, and each proton carries an electric charge of plus one. Here's a proton. It's labeled with a P and a plus sign because it carries an electric charge of one. All neutrons have a mass of one atomic mass unit, but they carry no electric charge. Here's a neutron. You notice it has no positive sign on it. It doesn't carry an electric charge. It does have a mass of one, just like the proton does, but it doesn't carry an electric charge. All electrons have almost no mass. As a matter of fact, the mass of an electron is about 1 1,832nd of the mass of a proton. And each electron carries an electrical charge of negative 1. So you can see this electron that I've drawn here has a negative sign on it because it carries a negative electric charge. The two charged particles in an atom are the proton and the, and the electron. Protons and neutrons are located in an extremely tiny, dense central core of an atom. It's called the nucleus. It's very tiny and very dense. If you could build a model atom to scale, you could make the nucleus the size of a grain of sand and set it in the middle of a football field. The first electron would be invisible and it would be at the goalpost. Atoms are mostly empty space. The mass of the atom is contained in a very tiny, dense central nucleus. That's where the protons and neutrons are. For instance, here is a nucleus. I've drawn some protons in red. You can see they're labeled with a P and a plus sign. And the neutrons in this nucleus I've drawn in blue, and they're labeled with an N. Now remember that the proton carries a positive electrical charge. The electrons orbit the nucleus in energy levels within an electron cloud that surrounds the nucleus. Here are some electrons. You'll notice, by the way, that there's one electron for every proton that's in the nucleus. Those electrons are moving so fast that if you could actually see the atom, they would appear as a blur that surrounded the atom, and they would create what's, re what's called an electron cloud. So here I'm showing you the electron cloud. So here is our model of the atom. It has a very tiny, dense nucleus containing protons, each with a positive charge and a mass of one, neutrons with no charge and a mass of one. And orbiting that nucleus are the electrons that have almost no mass, but each electron carries a negative charge of one. They move so fast, they form a cloud around that nucleus. Let's talk about those electrons. Here we see our atom. We see the nucleus with the protons and neutrons. We see the electrons orbiting the nucleus within this electron cloud. Electrons have a magnetic polarity. That means, similar to the Earth or a bar magnet, they have a north and a south magnetic pole. And they also spin as they orbit the nucleus of the atom. These electrons spin on their axis. And the spin direction, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, depends on the magnetic polarity of the electron. So if we could look at one single electron, say this one here, we notice that it's spinning, in this case, in a counterclockwise direction. The north pole appears to be pointed up and the south pole appears to be pointed down. 
and I've drawn an arrow to represent the spin of the electron. This up arrow tells you that this electron is spinning in a counterclockwise direction and that the north pole is upward. Well, let's look at another electron in this atom. This one down here. And we can see that this electron is spinning in a clockwise direction. The north pole is reversed here. It's pointing downward on the page and it's represented by a downward arrow. So if I wanted to draw the spin representative of an electron, I can use either an up arrow or a down arrow. That tells you the polarity of the magnetic field and the spin of the electron. Here's our atom again. You see the nucleus with the protons and neutrons. You see the electrons orbiting that nucleus and you see the electron cloud. In the ground state, that means the lowest energy configuration for this atom. In the ground state, atoms will have the same number of electrons as protons. This atom has five protons and five electrons. Five protons, five electrons. This is important because it cancels out the electric charge of the atom. In the ground state, the atom is electrically neutral. It has no net electrical charge. The charge is canceled out by the equal number of protons and electrons. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking to you about electron configurations. I might approach this a little differently than you would hear in, say, a basic chemistry class, Chemistry 101, or even high school chemistry. And the reason I'm doing this my way is because I don't want to teach you how to construct electron configurations on paper. That's not my purpose. That's a skill that might be important. What I want you to do is be able to understand why atoms bond together to form molecules and formula units. And the best way to do that is to understand what electron configurations are. Because an electron configuration can help you understand why an atom does what it does when it comes near another atom. That's my reasoning. We're going to start out by looking at just a very basic, a very generalized model of an atom and we know that our atom has a nucleus and within that nucleus are protons each one with a positive charge and neutrons and we also know that orbiting that nucleus at some distance we have electrons and I'm going to draw three electron energy levels here there's the first energy level here's the second energy level and here's the third energy level now you know that each of these energy levels represents a different number of electrons. You know, for instance, we've talked about this before, that the first energy level, the first shell, can, con can contain two electrons. We know that the second energy level can con contain eight electrons, and we know that the third energy level can hold 18 electrons, and that number increases as you get bigger and bigger atoms and they have more and more electrons and they have to move into higher energy levels. So if we look at this idea, this model of the atom, it's just a very basic model. It helps us understand in our brain, in our mind, something that we can't see, atoms. And so I'm going to use this model to help you understand electron configurations. And in order to do that, I'm going to take this very basic atom and I'm going to cut it sort of like a piece of pie, just like that. And I'm going to get rid of all this in here. That would just confuse the issue. And I'm going to bring that down here. And so now we have a piece of the atom that looks sort of like this. And within this section of the atom, we know we have, well, got some nucleus there, so that's where the protons and the neutrons are, down here. 
and then we have energy levels and we of course we cut this out like a pie so we they don't go all the way around the atom now so this is the first energy level the second energy level and the third energy level the levels the principal quantum number quantity of energy that's where the word quantum that's what it refers to so we have the first level the second level and the third level and it looks like just single orbits that go around this nucleus now to help you understand this what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on one of these levels I'm going to zoom in on the first level here so if I were to zoom in on one tiny section of this you would see that that first level has within it one single orbital an orbital is a place that can hold a maximum of two electrons so here's one electron here's another electron two electrons that first energy level has what's referred to as one sublevel and that sublevel is referred to as an S sublevel well might be a little confusing but let's go ahead and let's move on to the second level up here that second level you know has more energy in it and if it has more energy in it then it must contain more electrons and it does that second energy level has two sublevels and each sublevel has a different number of orbitals in it so we have this lower sublevel and that is an S sublevel just like that one it has one orbital and here we have a P sublevel and it has within it three orbitals so this second level can hold two electrons each in each orbital and let's count these electrons one two three four five six seven eight so there's the eight electrons that can be held in that second level. So we have a total of two electrons in this first energy level, and we can have a total of eight electrons in the second level. Well, I'm not going to go up to the third level just yet, at least not on this diagram. I'm going to show you a different diagram. Here's this different diagram basically the same thing we have levels over here level 1 level 2 level 3 and level 4 these are the principal quantum numbers each level the first level has one sub level you can see it's labeled sub levels up there so the first level has one sub level here's the nucleus down here second level has two sub levels an S and a P sub level this is the same diagram that you saw me drawing right here. Here is the piece of the pie that I cut out, the piece of the atom, the pie-shaped piece of the atom. The nucleus down here, the first energy level with one sublevel, an S sublevel. It has one orbital. The second level, an S sublevel. It's divided into two levels, an S sublevel and a P sublevel. The S sublevel has one orbital. The P sublevel has one, two, three orbitals. Here's the third level. You notice that the third level has one, two, and three sublevels. It has an S, a P, and a D sublevel. S, P, D sublevel. You also notice that the fourth energy level actually overlaps that D sublevel. So the S sublevel of the fourth level, it actually overlaps the D sublevel of the third level. As we use this, it won't be quite as confusing. You notice that the fourth energy level has one, two, three, four sublevels. It has an S a P and a D and an F sublevel. So each sublevel contains a different number of orbitals. An S sublevel contains one orbital. Remember an orbital is simply a place that can hold a maximum of two electrons. The second energy level has 
two sublevels, an S sublevel and a P sublevel. The S sublevel has one orbital. A P sublevel has three orbitals, one, two, three. So the S sublevel here could hold two electrons. The P sublevel here can hold two, four, six electrons. That gives you a total of eight electrons in the second energy level. The third energy level has an S sublevel, two electrons, a P sublevel, two, two, and two, that's six, and a D sublevel, that's two, four, six, eight, ten. So we have ten and six and two, that gives us eighteen electrons in the third level. Remember, every level is divided into a certain number of sublevels that matches the principal quantum number. It shows you how much energy or electrons can be held within those energy levels. And that's where we start with the basic understanding of electron configurations and how the electrons can allow atoms to bond together to form molecules and formula units. If we look at the first element on the periodic table, this is hydrogen. Every hydrogen atom has the atomic number one. Now every hydrogen atom might have a different mass number because hydrogen atoms can have different numbers of neutrons, but every hydrogen atom has an atomic number of one. That means it has one proton in its nucleus. And with one proton in its nucleus, it must therefore have one electron orbiting in that nucleus. That electron will be as close to the nucleus as possible, as shown in this chart. That electron will be in the first energy level, in its S sublevel. There's that one electron, and I've indicated the spin with an up arrow. So the electron configuration for this hydrogen atom is 1s1. And we can see that. That 1s1 means first energy level, S sublevel, contains one electron. See right here, first energy level, S sublevel, one electron. That's the electron configuration for hydrogen, 1s1. The valence level here is the first level. The highest energy level that contains at least one electron for any atom is referred to as the valence level. Well, let's look at the next element on the periodic table, and that element is helium. All helium atoms have two protons in the nucleus. And again, these atoms might differ by mass, but they all have two protons in the nucleus. Because they have two protons in the nucleus, they must also have two electrons orbiting that nucleus. And those two electrons, if this atom is in the ground state, will be in the lowest energy level possible. They'll be in the first energy level, in the S sublevel, and it will contain not one, but two electrons. And in the ground state, those electrons will be, will be spinning in opposite directions. And so the electron configuration for helium is going to be 1s2. That means two electrons. There's the electron configuration for helium, 1s2. And the valence level, the highest energy level that contains at least one electron, is going to be the first level. Valence level is one. So let's take a look at what happens when this first period of the periodic table is completed with electrons. We have hydrogen, 1s1, helium on the opposite side of the periodic table is 1s2, and that completes the first period, and that fills that first energy level with electrons. That first energy level can only hold two electrons. That makes helium stable. It fills the first period with electrons. It makes helium chemically stable. It also makes helium one of the noble gases. Every element 
in group 18 on the periodic table will have a filled valence level with its maximum number of electrons it will make the element stable chemically stable chemically inert that's why helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon don't normally combine chemically with anything else because they're stable the valence level is filled with electrons and we know of course that when atoms interact it's the valence level of, of electrons that interact so if the valence level is filled then the atom doesn't want to get any electrons to fill it and it's not going to give up any electrons to another atom that filled valence level represents a lot of stable energy so now let's look at the next element on the periodic table and that element is lithium atomic number three why because there are three protons in the nucleus and with three protons in the nucleus there must be three electrons orbiting that nucleus two of those electrons are going to be in the first energy level s sub level here are the two electrons where does that third electron go well it can't fit into the first energy level because the first energy level fills that orbital in the first energy level with two electrons and only two electrons remember an orbital can only hold two electrons that third electron goes in the second energy level s sub level will now hold one electron so the electron configuration for lithium will be 1 s 2 and 2 s 1 it looks like this 1 s 2 and 2 s 1 and the valence level in this case is going to be the second level why because that's the highest energy level that contains any electrons the second level well we can look at the next element on the periodic table which is beryllium now beryllium atoms have four protons in the nucleus and with four protons in the nucleus that means it must also have four electrons orbiting that nucleus and in the ground state those electrons will be in the lowest energy level available first energy level s sub level remember it can only hold two electrons so there's two right there spinning in opposite directions second energy level s sub level can hold two electrons and there are the four electrons orbiting the beryllium atom and so the electron configuration for beryllium is going to be 1 s 2 and 2 s 2 it looks like this 1 s 2 2 s 2 and the valence level again is going to be the second energy level because that's the highest energy level that contains electrons well let's go ahead and continue we can look at a boron atom and a boron atom has five protons in its nucleus it therefore must be orbited by five electrons that cancels the electric charge of the atom in the ground state the net charge of the atom is zero those five electrons are going to be in the lowest energy levels available two of them are going to be in the first energy level 1s2 two of them are going to be in the second energy level s sublevel it's going to have those two electrons where does that fifth electron go it goes in the second level p sublevel and it goes in that first orbital and that is the electron configuration for boron is 1 s 2 2 s 2 and 2 p 1 it looks like this 1 s 2 2 s 2 and 2 p 1 
and the valence level is the second level and that's why I've underlined it here. Let's take a look at the next atom on the periodic table which is carbon. Carbon has six protons in the nucleus it therefore must have six electrons orbiting that nucleus and they're going to be in the lowest energy level possible. So here's the electron configuration for carbon. 1 s 2 2 s 2 and then 2 p 2. The electron configuration for carbon looks like this. 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 2. And the valence level, of course, is that second level. It's the highest energy level that contains any electrons. The next element on the periodic table here is nitrogen. Notice that nitrogen atoms all have seven protons in the nucleus. Therefore, they have seven electrons orbiting that nucleus. And at the lowest energy level, in the ground state, the electron configuration will be 1s. 2, it'll be 2s2 two two and 2p3. It looks like this 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. And again, the valence level is the second energy level. By the way, that's what places nitrogen in the second period on the periodic table. It's because in the second period the second energy level is filling. Remember in the first period the first energy level filled with helium. The second energy level the second energy level will fill with neon. So here's the next element. Oxygen. Eight protons means eight electrons orbiting that nucleus. 1s2 2s2 and 2p4. And there is the element oxygen's electron configuration. And it looks like this. 1s2 2s2 2p4. And you can certainly see that the valence level again is the second level. Next element, fluorine. Nine protons in the nucleus and therefore it has nine electrons orbiting that nucleus. Here's the electron configuration. 1s2 2 s 2 and 2 p 1 2 3 4 5 2 p 5 so our electron configuration for fluorine looks like this and again the second energy level is the valence level now we complete the second period with neon neon has 10 protons in its nucleus. It has 10 electrons orbiting that nucleus to cancel out the net electric charge of the atom and make the atom neutral. So when this atom is in the ground state it has 10 electrons. Those 10 electrons will be arranged like this. 1s2 2s2 and 2p 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And you notice the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The valence level is the second level and in that second level there are eight valence electrons and that fills the second period with electrons. And that means with eight valence electrons that atom has a stable octet and with that stable octet it means that that neon atom is chemically inert 
It's stable. It makes it a noble gas. The second period is filled. Neon is chemically inert. It's stable and it is a noble gas. And that's the idea behind electron arrangement or electron configurations. In the ground state, the electrons will be in the lowest energy levels possible.